welcome to Beck's Bug Out Survivor two prong this video we're going to see the difference between insulation and isolation with silver reflectors because there's a bit of controversy with that online and also Pertex shell sleeping bags why don't they insulate as well as other sleeping bags do And the reason Pertex doesn't always insulate like a, a stitch through sleeping bag is because of its shield it has on the outside and the fill is absolutely separate from the inner and outer sleeping bag. A lot of other sleeping bags will stitch between the outside shell right through the insulation right through to the inside. And I'll just quickly put up a picture and that will show you what a stitch free bag looks like it reduces the insulation it also allows all the heat to escape through the stitch holes as where a pertex shell there's no stitch through traps a lot of air but it also acts as an isolator from your insulation so a good map down pertex sleeping bag on top and you're wondering why is it not insulating so we need a fix for that and that's what we're doing bought two pertex shell sleeping bags out with me one is almost skin tight the other is a lot baggier because we can counter the pertex as an isolator in two different ways that is a tarp in case it rains an inflatable which is going to be part of the insulation and why it doesn't insulate I have a ground pad here mine is silver reflected we can use this also have one of these type of um, mats here which is air bubbles silver reflector the silver is a key part and two Pertex shell sleeping bags. I'm not sure which one this is. Yeah, okay. This Pertex shell sleeping bag is the Fexka Army sleeping bag. Comfort probably minus 10. I've read minus 18, but I think that's with the outer shell. Two sizes with your Fexka medium or regular, and then long, which is large. This is the large, but I'm not particularly a large guy I'm not small either right in the middle of the road there but I've got the large to use in conjunction with an air pad like this this is the Multimat Adventure 38 and I'll show you how I can insulate Pertex some people do this what I'm doing here now some people have never tried it and don't like it don't be one of those who have never tried it and don't like it at least try it a pertex shell what is that as we discussed, no stitch through. There's no stitch through on the outer fabric. And if I come to the inner insulating part here and the outer, I can pull them apart. So I hope that makes sense. We've got an air gap, in other words, between the stitch through of the inner, an air gap, and then the shell. That shell is Pertex. And it doesn't let that heat escape either although it still wicks moisture to a degree the trouble is I put the air pad down put the bag on top and because it's such a good isolator it fails to insulate let's see what I mean the Avenger 38 mummy shape air pad on its own this is 
an insulator. It puts a barrier between the cold ground, my sleeping bag with me in the sleeping bag. Therefore, it should insulate me. Okay, that's firm enough. And remember, in winter, this may contract and expand as the temperature changes and deflate slightly. It's going to happen with most air pads in the middle of the night. This here, under the sleeping bag. So in the summertime, that should be fine. You're not going to notice any uh, conduction effect that much. However, as the temperature dips, you're going to be wondering why it's failing to insulate. And it's a two-prong attack to fix that issue. I have my preferred method. Is my method correct? Is it wrong? It's neither. It's whatever works for the individual. And that's what's important. No two people are the same when they sleep. Different body mechanics. A lot of different reasons to why people sleep warm. Some people sleep cold. I, I sleep cold. This will keep me warm. For a bit. And then it'll stop insulating. I'll start getting a cold bum. What's the problem? And you could be scratching your head thinking I have an Arctic sleeping bag take me down minus 10. I know the sleeping bag is warm. I have an insulating pad 5.3 or it might be 5.6 doesn't matter yours will be different. The two together surely should work sitting here got a cold ass all to do with this Pertex shell acting as an isolator. In other words, it's a barrier between any heat that is being generated by my body, getting through the shell of the sleeping bag, eventually warming me. Stitch through sleeping bags, you won't have that effect, but instead you'll have the effect of it losing any body heat through the stitch work. One winter season air pad, one Arctic sleeping bag. This is the medium weight, minus 10. Inside, like that. First thing I want to get in using this system is that I'm not going to use the hood because I want to trap as much air as I can around the neck. In the hood would go my jacket or something to make a pillow and zipping up you can see how much of a tight seal I have around my neck area here and wearing a scarf and hat in this system is phenomenal no air can escape um, through this neck baffle or rather neck area because this bag does not have a baffle it prevents all the heat energy that I've created escaping either the trouble I've had using it this way with the pad in the bag and wearing a hood is when I turn to my side all you can see is my ear because the hood remains facing upwards and I've rotated so there's a massive air gap for all my heat energy to escape and cold to come in so get used to wearing a hat and a scarf and just zip up a lot of people who are serious backpackers can see the benefit of not having a hood most modern day sleeping bags by the way now have an option that you can click whether you want a hood or not like i said it creates a tighter seal where a hat will do and let's face it you'll have a hat in your pack for the day hike instantly very very warm compared to when i got in and i had that cold butt just lying there that's gone i have the insulation in with me there's nowhere for the heat to escape providing of course 
I'm zipped right up to my neck, got a hat and scarf on. You can see around the neck there, no heat loss at all. Any heat I'm generating is going to stay in the bag all night. There is going to be a factor of the ground now chilling the actual pad. That is called convection. But I did bring that silver bubble reflector with me and that could help here. How would I use that? I've had this confusion on my channel before the difference between using this as an insulator and how I use it as an isolator. I have my insulation in the form of that air pad. I have my insulation. I don't want further insulation unless it's particularly cold. This can be used as an isolator, a barrier that goes on the cold ground. A lot of people at this point would like to argue that this goes under my body. You don't have bare skin on this stuff. Some people will even argue it goes between the pad and the sleeping bag. But remember, we have insulation. This is going to be an isolator. Let me give you a scenario. I have six wool blankets on top of me. Sure, I'm warm. Now I'm lying on an iceberg with six blankets over me. What wins? The warmth of six blankets over me or the cold of that iceberg straight onto my back? What do you think? If you've said, regardless how many wool blankets you have, you're going to be cold, unless you have an isolator, you'd be right. If I had two of them bubble reflectors, I could have one under the mat also, provided you have another, which is a barrier between the direct ground and contact with the bag and the pad in it. It's only a three quarter length, this, that silver reflector. So it shoulders to the back of my knees. Wish I bought my hat now. But on the plus side, let me undo this from my neck. You see, nothing to escape in that way. Before, when I put the pad underneath, the Pertex made an isolator of its own. It acted like a, a barrier to prevent um, the insulation. That is why it came in with me. That is why you need a big sleeping bag. A smaller sleeping bag, you won't get away with this trick. It'll be too tight. You'll find it hard to do the zip up, especially if you're like me and you're a bigger guy. I have the medium version of the sleeping bag. So I have two of these now. I'm getting them pretty cheap and I like them. Zips aren't that great, but I just snip them out sewing a really good zip and this should last me the next 20 years. But the bag itself is pretty good, pretty good for 25 quid ex-army surplus. And just phone up the warehouse and say, send me one out. And that's a great way to get these cheap. So the pad inside with me and an isolator underneath. That isolator is important. An isolator. A Pertex is another isolator. The inner part of the sleeping bag, an insulator. What I'm lying on, the air pad, another insulator. The orange rescue mat that I have down on the flip side also has a silver backing to it. Another isolator. Plus, keeps everything clean. Not only does it keep everything clean, as you can see, it's another isolator. My other sleeping bag is the Buffalo. It's designed to be a tight body fit. You actually measure it to your height and your width and you get in and it is so tight, that's how it insulates. I am not gonna get away with putting an air pad in that. So let me dissemble all this and we'll have a look at method number two.
taken the Fexca bag out and I've got in the Buffalo, which is a two-part system. Two-part, the inner and the outer. And again, it has a Pertex. The pad underneath, you might prefer that method. And the isolator, don't confuse this with being an insulator. Remember, we're preventing the cold from coming up from the ground and making my warm pad cold. A little more tricky to insulate and isolate. I'm still left with the same problem. The Pertex is still acting as an isolator, preventing me from gaining any insulating value from the pad. Even though I still have an isolator on the bottom here, I'm not getting any benefit between this layer. Like I said, this is a two part system, an outer bag and an inner bag. And between here, I have another insulator. Notice how it's reflective side up. If I wanted to use a thinner isolator like this, and I didn't have the bubble pad, I would put the silver side down. Ground is a lot cooler. Wow, yep, that's working nice. And if I slip my hand underneath, I should have the bottom part of this warm. I love the hood with this. The hood on this buffalo bag is unique. It has a face shield. which is accessible through the top and bottom. Oh, wow. And nowhere for cold to get in. That reflector between the two bags is throwing back all the energy that would otherwise be lost. And I first discovered it last year, this problem, when I took out a sheepskin rug, big one, and put it in my hammock. And I put this very sleeping bag system straight on top of my sheepskin, which is otherwise brilliantly warm. I zipped up for the night and I woke up neither cold, but neither too hot either. Not, not warm, not warm enough. And I pondered why that could be. Some people suggested that it was the blame of the sheepskin itself, that because it's stitched together, I'm losing insulation that way. But not necessarily so. I've had the very same sheepskin on a hammock stand in the garden. Been fine, more than fine, really warm. So the conclusion in my mind is the Pertex shell is working as an isolator. And I did another night camp. This time I was straight on top of my sheepskin. However, I just left the bag unzipped turned it over and used it like a quilt like a duvet so i wasn't zipped up it went over me like a blanket toasty toasty warm all night and that is available to watch that video a lot of people will say you're going to be warmer without your clothes it's true as far as i can see with cotton i hate wearing cotton inside a sleeping bag and a lot of people say you're going to be warmer stripping off and then getting in here's the thing i am not going to make youtube videos naked just for you to see me naked getting in a bag it's strange it's a work of a pervert so although i've <laughs> So although I would take all my cotton layers off, I'm not going to film it. Already an otherwise cool system is now warm again. It helped having an isolator, also an isolator here. Then the insulation under the bag. And an insulator between the two layers of sleeping bag and me as the radiant heat source. Don't forget to get a stainless steel water bottle fill it up full of warm water, put it in a sock, get it down the bottom of your sleeping bag. And because there's nowhere 
for that warm air to escape around the neck area if you've got a good sleeping bag you're going to be toasty toasty warm all night so two ways of doing the same thing one with quite a big large sleeping bag which i can get the pad in with me and it needs to be wide otherwise too tight love that idea remember don't um put the hood on just get it round your neck wear a scrim scarf as well and a hat the hat you lose about 83 percent of your body heat through the crown there the, your baldy bit that prevents a lot of heat loss and i'm preventing heat loss through having a scarf on the only issue i don't like with it wearing a hood is when i rotate the face hole remains pointing at the sky although my head is lying on the side because i've rotated from my back to my side so the bag doesn't come with me hence hat scarf don't use a hood zip up don't like that idea and you've got a smaller bag like that you can have the pad underneath totally different option but achieving the same goal of using insulation and an isolator and that works too but we're in this instance i'm using a system a two bag system with the insulating silver reflector facing up towards the sky between the two sleeping bags radiating that energy back towards my body and i also have an isolator under my blow up pad as well and that's a way of doing it that way a better idea that if you like to have the hood and when you rotate to your side the whole sleeping bag comes with you regardless so two very different ways i would recommend that first option getting your pad in with your hat scarf you're going to notice a tremendous difference but like i said get a big bag buy the the large or the wide if you already have a bag and no intentions of buying a new one this would be the option for you but you're gonna need two bag system now, it doesn't have to be a dedicated system you could use an old army jungle sleeping bag and the jungle sleeping bag is for low temperatures it won't offer much in the way of warmth but it traps a barrier of air and you've got that silver reflector pushing energy towards your body right then before i fall asleep i'm going to put my boots back on start packing up a lot to get through there really knowing the difference between insulation and isolation because i get it all the time on the channel oh you should have the silver facing up most of the time i do have a second pad where the silver is facing up but viewers will often see me putting the silver side down and you can always put another one on top of your air pad silver facing up and these little foam silver reflectors they're really light you can have two they don't cost much they don't take up much space so until next time you take care of yourself and have a warmer night's sleep where you possibly can see you next time happy trails